What's going on, people of the world, people of the basketball world? What's going on today? Your boy, Cal Griffin, is back with another edition of Legends Talk, man. Today, we got a, we got a goodie. We got a, a, a dude, you know what I'm saying, who um been through been through every pretty much every level of basketball, man, every level of basketball up to the professional ranks. You know what I'm saying? Stick with us. Go tell a friend. Go get your popcorn. Go do what you got to do, man, because we here. Legends talk, y'all. Gary Forbes. Legends talk. Get with us. Mr. Gary Forbes, man, what's going on? He's in the building, y'all. Going on. Yo, man, I appreciate you for for taking the time out of your busy schedule, man, um, to to come kick it with me. Um, I know the game is on. I know you know what I'm saying there's a couple things going on right now, and um, you know what I'm saying you 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 honored you honored your word, man, and, and uh, that's that's big for me. So I, I really appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, man. Word, my word is my bond, man. Nah, that's that's solid, man. So. You know we ain't gonna we ain't gonna hold you up too long. Um, we do have a, a, a few questions for you. Um, you know what I'm saying you've been you've been around, man. You've been you've been here, you've been there, you've been everywhere. So we we just want to kind of take a peek into the go into your world. Um, you know what I'm saying, and and just um, find out. You know what I'm saying what, what's been up. Um, but before we do that, man, I gotta I gotta definitely shout out Soul Pack, man. Our sponsor for Legends Talk. Uh, Soul Pack is a bag company. Um, with the basketball hooper in mind, um, you know they have a different styles of bags. Um, if you if you missed our last our last Legends talk, it was with Mike Mike Sala of Soul Pack, the founder of, of Soul Pack. Um, go check that out. But in the meantime, we're gonna run this quick um, this quick commercial, and when we when we return, we'll be back with Gary Forbes. Everybody, check us out, Soul Pack. Soul Pack, everybody, make sure you go get yours. You can uh, visit them um, on their, their website, the soulpack.com. Follow their IG page at Soul Pack. And uh, without further ado, Mr. Gary Forbes, man, again, thank you for taking the time out, man. We're going to get right into it. Um, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're a baller. You know what I'm saying? You've been here, you've been there, you've been around the world um, doing this thing. And um, it's a pleasure to have you on our platform, man, for real. Um, my first question, man, we're going to rewind all the way back to the beginning. Uh, I want to I want to find out, you know, what I'm saying in terms of you, you picking up a, first picking up a basketball, like what age did you first get introduced to the game? And uh, when did you actually realize, like, listen, this is what I want to do as my career? Uh, I think I was like two years old when I was first introduced to the game. My, uh, my father, he uh, he was a welder on the Panama Canal and he built us uh, like a hoop. Um, like out of like backboard, he had like steel and like it was like a regulation like size hoop, whatever that you were able to like carry around with you. And you know, me and my brothers, we were playing the house. And you know, when I came to, you know, to this country when I was five years old, you know, I, I you know I asked my father to send you know to send the hoop to Brooklyn. And you know, I remember me and my boys, we were playing in the driveway pretty much all day. And I think it was uh, probably about around like five years old. I knew that's you know that's what I wanted to do rest of my life well for the you know for the, for the my professional life right right man that's that's early man a lot of people don't get that uh you know don't don't get that love you know until later on but um you know those that do get the love and and, and kind of tap into that passion 
you know what I'm saying? Good things, good things happen. Um, now in, in Brooklyn, uh, you're, you're originally, originally from Brooklyn or did you uh, move to Brooklyn early on? Uh, I mean, I was I was born in Panama, but you know, I, I, like I rep Brooklyn. I basically was raised there all my life. So right, right. Now, now in Brooklyn, uh, you start at, at Benjamin Banneker Academy. Um, you know, what I'm saying where where the accolades kind of kind of you know you collected all all these accolades, and um, you know, what I'm saying you you earned player the player the year in Brooklyn as a senior. Um, you're nominated for city player of the year. Um, you know, amongst other things, as well as, um, you know, first team, all city and all, all tri-state honors as well. And, and a finalist for McDonald's All-American. Um, now, you know, what, what is it like to, to, to be a kid and to um, kind of, you know, be thrust into the limelight, you know, in terms of being, you know, that dude or that, 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 that star player or what have you early on? Like, how, how was it like kind of giving up your your childhood so to speak to now be this uh you know larger than life kind of basketball player i mean it was it was crazy in, in high school like my my freshman year like i kind of always i had that uh kind of like thinking that i was you know one of the top players in the city you know like i, I played on teams with you know sebastian telfair chris taff um you know cindy out of games like all these like top players in the country and like something you know, something just just you know rang in my head that I was just as good or even better than these guys. You know, like I put in the work. You know, I put in the ten thousand hours. You know, when when guys were probably you know going out partying. You know, even though my you know my mom was having me on smash and you know, I couldn't go out. So most of those times, you know, I was just like constantly just thinking about basketball and you know just that that love and that passion. I don't think that. You know, anyone pretty much had that. You know, my coach would wake me up at six in the mornings, and, and we'll be at Banneker at six in the mornings. You know, having you know, workouts and practice. You know, before even school started. So, you know, I, I was definitely put in. You know, putting that work in. You know, I believe when you put when you when you put in that that effort and that work to something, it's only right that the universe gives it back to you. Now that's that's a fact, man. Um, those ten thousand hours don't go unnoticed. You know, um, they they watching, man. The powers that be are watching, and um, you know what I'm saying. With, with you know, with kind of accumulating those all of those accolades, it's almost impossible that um, that you know schools, colleges, and whatnot they're gonna take notice. Um, now, like when was when was it that you received your your first letter, and um, you know what I'm saying how did that make you feel as a, as a baller? Um, and you know, what, you know, as, as they started coming in, like who were some of the early front runners in terms of, you know, Hey, I want to, I want to go to this school or, you know, what would, who were some of the, the schools that you were kind of looking at, at at that time early on? Yeah, I think it was like my sophomore year. Like that's when I like really got into like the AAU scene. I was playing with the juice all-stars and, and Brooklyn USA and Brooklyn bridge and those, uh, and those teams before I, before I went to Riverside, but, uh, you know, I think I, I think it was like like mid major schools like uh, you know Boston University and and you know low D one schools that were that were you know interest at first and you know it kind of definitely uh, got me got me hyped and you know I was probably one of the only ones in the school getting letters at the time so you know back then that was like a big thing you know, yeah. at a school like Benjamin Banneker you know we got a a total of maybe. 350 kids you know in that high school and you know for me to be ranked in the city and things like that it was a it, it was a big honor but um you know i think around junior and senior year once i you know switched to riverside and you know started getting my name out there and being one of the you know highly touted players in the country you know big schools like you know virginia georgia tech duke north carolina you know like dream schools basically right right they're growing up, you know, to get those letters from that and get recruited by those schools. Wow, that's yeah. big. Yeah. That's huge, man. You know what I'm saying? Especially from, you know, like a, a school like Benjamin Banneker is not like a, you know, basketball powerhouse either. It's not really well in terms of not being known or having that reputation. So, you know, you probably stuck out like a sore thumb. Like, yo, this guy, you know, yo, y'all got to see this guy, this guy play. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, in terms of in terms of rankings, you you mentioned rankings. Um, in, in 2003, you were ranked, you know, the, the number four prospect uh, shooting guard actually, and the, the number 20th 
overall um, prospect on ESPN's you know top 100 list, which is which is major to to everybody. Um, you know what I'm saying? That's a that's a huge accomplishment. Now you know, and that's for that incoming class. Um, you know, the 2003 incoming class. How tough it? How tough was it to you know on a daily basis to kind of live up to this you know the standard of being you know the the top guy or one of the top guys um, in the city and if not the country. Um, you know, did you have, you know, did you feel like you had a bullseye on your back and did, you know, and how did you kind of, um, you know, how did you go at that? Were you kind of, you know, aggressively going at it and, and, uh, still want to tear everybody head off or were you kind of, uh, you know, I'll let you answer that. I mean, I, I feel like at at that time, I feel like I, I worked for that, uh, you know, so hard. So it wasn't, you know, nothing that. You know, I felt any pressure on, or like this is what I this is what I wanted, and these are the things that you know that I worked for. So every day, you know, that's I always talk with with some guys that that's played like back in my era, or you know, back in back in those days. Like, you know, the basketball now is different. You know, guys aren't really like trying to like you know destroy or kill or right. you know, have that that same you know attitude towards the game. And you know when. I, obviously, you know, we didn't have social media. So when you went out there, you didn't you didn't know this player. You know, this guy's like ranked ahead of you, so you had no idea what this guy right this guy was or who this guy was. So you were trying to, you know, best him every time you uh every time you played him. Especially in Brooklyn growing up, you know, playing against guys like Gary Irvin, Sebastian Telfair, Quincy Doobie, and you know, those were those were wars. And yeah. You know, those those kind of things kind of like built you know built those you know built your uh you know your attitude your character and things like that and um you know it's kind of like easy trying to you know trying to be one of the best players in the country because like i said you you, you worked for that and you know those are things that you want now that's solid man you just named a bunch of a bunch of cats man that that uh that put in, you know, put in their work, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Especially, you know, you said Quincy Doobie, you know what I'm saying? G. Irv, uh, Sebastian, you know what I'm saying? Those are pretty much the the top tier guys. Um, and then they probably, you know, helped you elevate your game because you don't want to, you know, you want to come correct. And right. uh, you don't want to embarrass yourself or look as if you're, you're you know, subpar or, or what have you. So you want to, you know, people heard about you for a reason. And you want to show them why why they heard about you, um, but you know, with, with with that said, you know, later in your in your uh, your high school career, you ended up you know you ended up committing to 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 University of Virginia, um, and now you I mean you you received scholarship offers from from uh, you know several schools, including Georgia Tech, Mississippi State, and others. Um, but what made you you know I'm saying what made you choose um, UVA as your destination initially and um, you know what I'm saying like what made you well, well we'll we'll get into the you know what made you go into the another direction um, but what made you choose UVA uh, for starters well it was uh, like the last two schools well the last three schools I was down to was uh, Georgia Tech uh, Virginia and UConn and uh, mm. I just had, uh, you know, at the time, I, I, you know, I obviously don't live with regrets, but if I could have done it over, I think I would probably made a different decision just off the, uh, you know, the type of coaching uh, that was available to me at the time. But, um, you know, Coach Calhoun told me straight up, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play behind, I mean, I wouldn't play ahead of Ben Gordon, so I would have to redshirt, you know, my freshman year. And, you know, as a kid coming out of Brooklyn, like you said, I'm the, you know, top, you know, one of the top 20 players in the country, you know, I'm, you know, right. I'm thinking like, and you know, you know, I, I want to play. play. <laughs> I want to play right away. And, uh, you know, Georgia Tech um, was a great team. You know, obviously, they went to the national championship that year. Both both teams, Georgia Tech and UConn, went to the national championship that year. Crazy. So, uh, <laughs> so I had I had an opportunity to uh, to be at them. But, you know, Virginia just offered me uh, you know just playing time right away. You know, I started right away, and you know, it was, I guess it was kind of like an ego thing. Like I wanted to play at that level. You know, I had the, the ACC offers. I had you know, Big East offers, and, you know, I felt I was a, a big-time player, and I, you know, I could, you know, live up to that at that time. Uh, yeah, that's, that's you know, I, I respect that. You know what I'm saying? Any, anybody uh, coming, especially with the accolades that you were able to accomplish or, or build up, they want you want to play right away. You don't want to um, be, you know, behind anybody or anything like that. And, um, you know, that's, that's sound, you know, that's sound advice, man. Uh, anybody that wants to, 
even even though you you know you made a different you know you would have made a different decision um you know wanting to play initially um you know there's nothing wrong with that and um as a as a freshman uh you played in you played in all 31 games um starting and you started on more than more than half of the games um you know you averaged just shy under eight points and um like four four boards but um what made you ultimately want to want to move into a different or uh, change into your, you know a different direction and um and leave UVA for for UMass. Well, at the time, like when I was leaving UMass, I had um, I had uh, Memphis and I had I mean, when I was leaving UVA, I had Memphis and I had USC. And uh, my AU coach was you know just telling me like, why don't you just go be a, a big fish in a small pond? rather than, you know, a small fish in the big pond going with all these like big time schools and you know, kind of show, you know, people that I can play at the highest level. And you know, I didn't necessarily have the biggest name coming out of, you know, high school. And you know, I kind of like worked, you know, my way in, into that kind of name. And, you know, other players obviously had, you know, uh, you know, bigger names and, and, and quicker starts than me. And, right, you know, right. I, like catch up and you know it's definitely uh difficult you know like there's always politics involved in this you know in this game and it's like you know kind of things that you have to deal with um but you know just going into umass you know one of the assistant coaches was from brooklyn and you know like it was kind of like a home field like i really felt at home and you know there were a couple of players that i knew that were at the school and you know we kind of still we're we're still on a group chat together we still have a like right right group chat and this is like you know, we graduated in 2008. I graduated in 2008, and you know, we still keep in touch. Like, you know, we're really good friends. So, you know, that that bond, I think, was you know one of the things that definitely made me. Uh, it was an easy decision. Now, you definitely, uh, you know, this game. You you build brother, you know, brotherhoods in this game. You know what I'm saying? And uh, even with sometimes some sometimes you build brotherhoods with competitors that you that you've gone to war with. You know, just like any any uh, any situation. Um, but you know, um, your your coach, your, your coach actually resigned that same year um, that uh, that you left. I thought maybe that had a, a correlation to it, maybe or maybe not. Um, but after he left, um, what'd you say? I said, nah. I was like other other like different things. It was like playing time stuff and you know. right, right. Now, now after you know, once once you transferred to UMass, um, you know, being that 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 big fish in a small pond. Um, you know, it was, it, it, you know, due to the NCAA rules and all of that, you had to sit out, you had to sit out a year. Um, how was that, man? Like, how was that as a, as a baller, um, you know, such as yourself, you know, wanting to play and just, um, you know what I'm saying? Just wanting to get to the next level. How was it having to sit out that 05, 06 season? Um, you know what I'm saying? How difficult was that just watching your peers play and, just kind of um, thinking, man, I, I wish I was out there. Like, talk to me about, you know, the difficulty you had um, just kind of sitting out and watching. I mean, that was, yeah. obviously definitely tough. Like you said, any basketball player, like, wants, wants to play there. You know, I would, obviously we, I was able to practice and, you know, do all the tours and, you know, do everything with the team, but then you don't get the reward, you know, for playing. So, right. But I felt I felt that year obviously sitting out obviously built a I guess a different type of hunger you know within me I was able to sit out and you know see where I can be you know, successful at you know at this level I, I was able to probably build up you know a chip on my shoulder like you know I had to come here and you know show these people that you know that I can you know play even at this even at this level at UMass so like I can still make a name for myself I can still make a big time name for myself so. Right. Um, you know, those are one of the things that I wanted to, you know, to to do, you know, during that year, kind of get a, like, a better mental you know, aspect towards the game, you know, change my physical, you know, all of these things. And I was actually uh, diagnosed with diabetes when I was you know, my sophomore year at UVA. Uh, I mean, my freshman year at UVA. So, you know, going on to, going into UMass, you know, those things were, you know, were a big thing to you know, try to like understand and, 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 and get ahead of. Right. Right. Now, now you mentioned, um, you mentioned the, the, the diabetes, um, and, and this was something that, um, you know, has spoke to you before, um, you know, prior to our conversation, uh, um, but 
it's no secret that um, that you were you were diagnosed with the, with the type one diabetes, um, which which you have a history in your family. Um, so you know, with, with that diagnosis at the age of nineteen years old, you know, and especially at this stage of your career, um, you know, what can you say to anybody out there that's that's facing, you know, the the, the daily challenge of of living uh, with diabetes? Who, who may be afraid, you know what I'm saying, to, to say anything in fear of maybe their, their coach sitting them or maybe the, the college scout not, not recruiting them as hard now or even, you know, that, that, uh, that coach that wants to even maybe give you less playing time now because he's nervous or, or what have you. Um, what, what kind of advice can you give somebody out there who's um, kind of hiding this, this – um, this, this secret and, um, you know, and, and wanting to, to say something to somebody. Well, I, I definitely, well, my, I feel like my biggest mistake coming out of the draft uh, was my agent didn't tell, you know, teams that I had you know diabetes. I, I didn't want to use it as a crutch and make people feel like, like you said, like, oh, you know, he can't do this because he's diabetic. But, you know, obviously it's a myth. Uh, you know, I, I never missed a game, never missed a practice. You know, I, I, I pride myself on, you know, one of the hardest workers, even to this day, you know, the type of training and stuff that I do, you know, I still work out, you know, pretty much like, you know, like I'm, I'm training for, for something and, you know, I'm a diabetic, you know, a lot of people always say, you know, I don't look like a diabetic and things like that. And those were, that's one of the, uh, the fears that I first had when, you know, my, you know, my doctor at Uni University of Virginia told me that I was you know, diagnosed with, with diabetes. Like you said, it runs in my family. My father has it. You know, my grandfather passed away from it. You know, my nephew has it now. <clears throat> and, you know, it was something that I guess, like, society makes you want to hide, you know, this this disability, I guess, uh, you know, that you have. But, you know, I proved, obviously, otherwise, you know, against right. those things. And, you know, for anybody that's definitely going through, you know, this, this uh, you know, if you're a diabetic and you're, you're an athlete, it's it's pretty much it's it's easy it's it's easy to like I've I've kind of proved it and you know it's there's there's so many different different things that you can use and and I guess I, I guess don't use it as a crutch um, I guess use it as a you know as a as a as a springboard you know like yo I have diabetes and I'm doing this you know that's right a, right confidence thing no, right no, right crutch. Right, you used it to propel you instead of um, using it to, you know, to to feel bad. You don't want anybody to feel bad about it or or feel bad um, that you know or give you any sympathy um, because you want to compete at the highest level just like everybody else. Right? And I re I totally respect that. Um, now now your senior year, um, your senior year after you know after matriculating to uh, to UMass, um, you were you were getting the honor of a ten. You know, eight. What was it? Eight ten player of the year. Uh, also um, placed. You know, on the first team on um, the eight the Atlantic ten first team. Um, you you helped them make a, a deep run. You helped you you mass make a deep run into the into the NIT, um, which at that time um, were you know there was some heavy hitters in in that NIT. I don't want anybody to think that uh, NIT, especially at this time, was a was a pushover. You, you had uh, you had Syracuse. Who you guys advanced past uh, two-time defending NCAA champions, um, Florida, University of Florida, and um, you guys actually lost to Ohio State, um, and you were actually named the uh, NIT, you know, in the NIT All Tournament team. Um, now, at this time, did you visualize a, a, a you know a spot in the NBA yet? At this, you know yet. Or did you did you um you know when did that that dream start to like actually start to materialize and say you know hey this is this is this could be possible for me? I visualized a spot in the NBA when I was like five years five old. Five years old, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I I had like no doubt, man. Like I don't know, I didn't know how I was gonna get there, but I knew I was going to get there. And um, you know, my senior year. You know, I, I feel like we should have uh, made the NCAA tournament. I think it probably would have made a, a easier transition to you know, to, to being drafted. Um, you know, obviously I went undrafted. You know, I feel like due to the fact that, 
you know, I had diabetes and I didn't tell, you know, teams. And, and this was something that I guess, you know, teams don't want to take a risk on yeah. a, you know, mid-major player who's like, you know, we kind of don't know if he's, you know, like, you know, going to make that that big impact. But um, And they felt maybe you were hiding something or something like that, right? So, um, but like, like, like I said, I obviously proved that there was a myth and by obviously grinding and, and making, you know, fighting my way to the, to the NBA. And it was like, like I said, it was obviously a dream come true. You know, I, you know, everyone has different paths and, you know, I enjoyed my path. My path obviously built, you know, built who I am and, and you know, I'm kind of definitely like proud of that. Now you definitely, definitely got it out the mud, man. Um, and, you know, those, those, those people who can, who can say they did that, you know, it's more self-fulfilling, you know what I'm saying? Like, as opposed to being, you know, always, uh, you know, handed handed something, you know what I'm saying? But in um, in 08, in 08, when you came out, um, you were you got invited to attend the um, the NBA pre, pre-draft camp in Orlando, um, also to the Washington Wizards, um, their, their, their mini camp. Um, and obviously, um, like you said, you, you went undrafted. Um, what did that do, you know, for your confidence as a, as a young man, you know, coming into his own, um, got the chips stacked against you, and, um, you know, you had this dream of, of making it, but you don't get selected. Uh, what did that do for your – I mean, obviously, you, you, you made it, um, and, I, you know, we all know what the answer is to that, but, you know, speak to what that did for your confidence in terms of um you know how did you how did you react from not being selected man that was like that was so tough man to you know i was player of the year in my conference you know i was you know honorable mention you know all american you know in ncaa i went to you know portsmouth pre-draft camp which was for seniors you know i got mvp there i got mvp of orlando camp right average about I think it was like 22 points in 23 minutes and you know in Orlando pre-draft camp wow and you know like I went to you know I went to all these like you know draft workouts with like about 26 teams you know and I felt like I held my own against you know guys like Chris Douglas Roberts you know uh you know you know we were like there was like a lot of a lot of guys at that position at that time coming out um and you know like for my confidence i think like it was it it kind of like i don't want to say like it it hurt me but it was like man like i did all this stuff like i I, like i proved against all odds you know i'm a diabetic i did all these things you know got all these accolades and you know like man i can't you know i'm not i'm not good enough you know as as these guys like i'm not there yet and you know especially like i remember uh, it was a, the Washington Wizards, you know, we were playing in um, Summer League. You know, I had, like, I had another game where I think I, I barely played. I probably played, like, two minutes in in the uh, in the game, and I, I knew I was better than these guys. And I was on the phone with my, like, my sister, and, you know, like, I'm crying on the phone, and she's like, you know, like, why? Like, why is this happening to me? And she was, you know, she just told me, like, you know, I just got to make a decision. Is this, you know, what you really want? You know, are you gonna like? Are you gonna really like fight for it, or are you just gonna like, you know, just like lay down? You know, like right. I think like life gives you so many challenges, whatever, and you know, it's up to you. Like, you know, you decide. One of the one of my like my uh, my favorite sayings is like, you decide. And if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're right. So mm. I really thought that I could. So I was gonna do it no matter what. I was gonna keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting until I until I got that reward. That's tough, man. You, that, that's tough. I'm, I'm gonna use that if you don't mind. I, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll reference you though, man. I'll give you your, your credit. Let us do, man. <laughs> but um, you know, what I'm saying this obviously, you know, you obviously went into the direction of you can do it. Um, and you know, at that time, it was it was moving on to, you know, to other opportunities. And and so um, when the over the prospect of playing overseas came to you um how did you feel about that you know did you feel like you know it was a it was a slight you know they they you know it was a you know it was a slight of of your skills or you know they trying to disrespect me or, or what have you or let me go make this money and then you know the dream is still there i'm i'm gonna you know i'm still 
do what I got to do to get to, to my end goal. How did you um, kind of take that that uh, experience? I mean, of course, you know, like I'm from, you know, I'm from Brooklyn. I have like a pride. So I, I definitely took it as a slave. I'm definitely as good as, as everyone that got drafted ahead of me. And, you know, going overseas, it was tough, man. Like, we don't, we don't got like FaceTime and stuff like, like we do. Back mm, you just missed it. You just missed it. <laughs> We had like Skype and stuff like that, but it was like it was tough, man. The first first year overseas, uh, I think I played two years overseas um, initially before um, getting um, selected in the NBA. Um, played in Italy both years, um, and as well as Israel. And I mean, I guess growing, going to those countries like helped my game, uh, you know, a little bit. I was able to have a different. Uh, style of game, playing a European style, and learn some things uh, from that that cultural aspect of basketball, and you know just you know still want and still having that passion. I still had you know offers in Euroleague to play, you know that year, but something you know I wanted to. I I knew I was an NBA player, so I, I had to make that decision and you know go with the the chances of of you know betting on myself and and. and you know, going with Denver Nuggets and, and making that uh, making that team in minicamp. All right, that's cool, man. I mean, in terms of um, like right before we get to your your experience with the Nuggets, um, you know, your experience, you know, it it, it took you it took you pretty much across the world. Um, to, you, you know, playing basketball, um, from you know from leagues here domestically, and um and and overseas as well. Uh, you know, countries Venezuela. Italy, Israel, China, Puerto Rico, or, uh, you know, um, you know, just places like that, man. And and how did it feel to to be at these places as a you know as a young man, um, on your own, you know, may you know not knowing the language, not knowing you know having all of these things against you, um, you know, what kind of what kind what did you go through in terms of um, of that experience being for you know being from you know, being American in these in these countries playing ball, um, did, you know, was it a healthy experience? Was you know, did you have your? I'm sure you had your ups and downs, but you know, overall, what kind of what kind of experience was it? Man, like just to, I mean, now looking back at it, man, I was able to play basketball in all these countries, man. I've, I've literally like flooded my passport with with stamps. Like you said, I played in in China, Vietnam, you know, Argentina. Panama, Puerto Rico, like all these places. And, right. you know, it's just like great experience. Every, everywhere I, I had great, you know, great times. And, you know, obviously there was some tough times in, in different places. That's a part of, you know, the grind of basketball. And, you know, I wouldn't, you know, take, you know, back any of those experiences for anything. Cause obviously it's, you know, made me, you know, who I am you know, and to this day. Um, but it was, you know, like, the overseas basketball, man, in some of those places is fun. Like one of the, you know, one of the best places I've ever been in my life is Israel, and you know that's one wow. of the best places in the world. I was able to, you know, go to all these different islands, and and you know, I was, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm very like cultural, you know, seeing all these places, and I'm, you know, I pride myself on being able to to see both aspects. I, I played at the highest level and, you know, I played at some, you know, some, some low, low places. So, you know, right, right, right. aspect of basketball, um, you know, I was getting paid on time in the NBA, you know, and I was not getting paid on time overseas. So like, right, right. And, you know, both levels and I can, you know, I can relate. And, and appreciate, you know, it for what it, yeah, it, it for what it, what it really was. Um, now, um, you know, kind of, Kind of uh, matriculating over to your your NBA time, man. What was it like to get that call, man? To get that call um, to say that uh, you know um, we're inviting you to, to well, how how did it go actually? Like, was it a we're inviting you to a camp situation, or was it um, like, hey, we're signing you to a ten day? And and how how did how did that go for you? Um, ten days were like uh, around at that time, so it was. Uh... You know, like I got invited to a training camp with the Denver Nuggets. And I remember I was like working out with one of my boys. You know, like I just, I felt like I was, you know, re NBA ready at that time. I just had came off a, a you know, great season overseas. You know, my confidence was high. You know, I was working like tremendously hard. 
And, you know, I got the opportunity to go to training camp with the Denver Nuggets. And at that time, they were looking for a center. Like, they only had two spots available. They needed uh, two bigs, you know, because Birdman and, like, Kenya Martin or something was hurt at right. the time. And, you know, I went into that. I went into that training camp, and I still have it to this day. Um, it's in my storage. I, I wrote down on a piece of paper in the hotel, I will make, you know, this Denver Nuggets roster. I dated it, signed it. And mm. I folded up. I kept it with me every single day during training camp. Like I, you know, I kept it in my bag. Or I kept it in my wallet. And every single day, like before practice, I would look at it, and you know, it kind of gave me like reassurance that, you know, I was good. And I had an amazing, amazing training camp. And I kind of made the Denver Nuggets like, yeah, you can't cut this guy. Like you have to sign this guy. Like there's, there's something right. here that's that's gonna make our team better. And you know, I remember the day George Carl, uh, you know, came up to me and told me, you know, I would, you know, I'd make the team. I remember I was nervous downstairs, you know, because they were coming downstairs and, you know, cutting some guys and some guys had to get dressed and, you know, leave. And, you know, right. my name was Paul. So, you know, I went upstairs with the rest of the team and, you know, playing with guys like, you know, Carmelo Anthony, Jossie Billups, Al Harrington, you know, my boy J.R. Smith, uh, you know, basically these like are Hall of Famers and to, you know, to be on that team with those guys, man, it was, it was like, you know, I couldn't even, uh, I can't, can't really like describe it in words, just making that, that kind of team and, and being accepted by those guys. Right. That's, you know, that's incredible, man. That's an incredible story right there, man. Um, just being, having those nerves and not knowing what they're going to be saying at this meeting or what have you, you know, it, it could have easily went a different direction, but um, you, you know what, man, everybody who says, that story of, yo, I wrote it down and I put it under my pillow or, or something like that. Usually good stuff happens to man. So I'm, I'm, I'm where's my pen, man? I'm going <laughs> I'm, I'm to get me, I'm going to get me a million dollars one way or another, man. I'm going to write it down right now. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, like being a pro man, like, you know, from, from not, like you say, not getting paid on time to, to now um, being, you know, and, and playing maybe, you know, I don't know what it was like in in, uh, in the places that you've played, but um, a lot of overseas, you know, um, places don't have the, you know, the big crowds or what have you. Some some places do, but um, a lot of the, some some places don't. But you know, now you're you're a professional man, and you're playing in these arenas. You're you're traveling. Obviously, it's a, a, a huge change from what you were, you know, you were doing before, and um, it's a stamp. It's a, it's a stamp of approval on your on your name, man, on your your legacy, man, um, that no one can erase. How did that, uh, you know, how did that make you feel? Like, did they embrace you um, in terms of like uh, like the the guys that you spoke about, Carmelo and and uh, Kenyon Martin, Birdman, and those guys, Chauncey Billups. Did they embrace you right away or was it a, uh, you know, a, a process or, you know, how did that work out for you? No, they did, man. Those guys, those guys, uh, you know, embraced me right away. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, they, I, I was in the basketball world. I played in the you know, NBA G League, I mean, NBA D League. Right, right, right. And, you know, they seen me at different, like, workouts. I was always, you know, on the West Coast, like, working out and, you know, trying to, you know, get to that level. So, um you know, I was definitely accepted by by those guys just because they. I feel like my my work. They they see me going to the to the to the practice arena late at night, 12, 1 a.m. Mm. Shots up, and you know, still coming back for practice. You know, getting up and being the first one there at you know 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. before practice started. And you know, I I I feel like they they respected the work um, first, and then you know, like you know, they. You know, they helped me with my game, and you know, I was able to, you know, take different things from 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 all of those guys. Nah, that's that's incredible, man. Must be an incredible feeling walking in there, uh, you know, with your with your bag and and next to next to those guys. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, now somebody can be, you know, when even when I saw you, man, I'm I was, you know, I, I'm a I'm a fan, so I'm I'm like, wow, that's that's Gary Forbes, man. You know what I'm saying? So. You know what I'm saying? Just having now your name is elevated to a certain a certain level. You've you've accomplished what you set out to do since you were five years old. And uh, that's a huge, you know, salute to you, man. Um, 
Yeah, I didn't I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to hold you too too long, man, in terms of I want to totally be respectful of your time. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, this is a is a pleasure to, to have you on this platform with me, just kind of, you know, shooting the breeze, man. Um can you know in terms of in terms of Denver, you know, I don't I don't know if it was a trade situation or or if it was just hey, you, you know, you're moving on to a different team or what have you. But um, can you tell me about you know how that went in terms of um, I'm sure it was disappointing that that you um, you know that 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 you had to go to a different team or or that you had to get a new start uh, with that a uh, different team. But how did that that transition go? I mean, going to Toronto uh, like it, there was during the time of the lockout, so it was like mm. kind of like a money situation and and you know they. You know the direction that the draft was going and you know me and my agent kind of you know made a a decision to you know to go with you know a decision about obviously you know getting paid like i worked this hard and i you know i couldn't take a you know a, a less than you know <laughs> yeah you know, that i i feel that i worked for other right. guys were playing for at the time so but i mean obviously if if you know if hindsight the you know the way it went in toronto wasn't as 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 good as I wanted it to go, like obviously you're playing on the Denver Nuggets, you're winning 57 games a year, and you're in the playoffs, you know, the four or five seed, and then you go to Toronto at the time, which were they, they were rebuilding um, to a young team, and you know you're winning like 25 games, so it was it's like the it's, right, right, right. The goals of it were were definitely different, um, but you know it it, it was what it was. I'm sure. I'm sure you wouldn't be as disappointed, um, you know, if, if that were today. You know, they're they're pretty, they're pretty, <laughs> pretty decent. You well, know, I feel like I feel like I should get an honorary championship uh, ring because I was in that <laughs> trade uh, from Toronto to Houston, so I got Kyle Lowry there. So, so hey, give that man, give that man his straight up Kyle, Kyle for Gary. So I, I got you guys a chip. I need, I need my little honorary ring. Hey man, I need to send send Gary his ring, man, ASAP. Now, but um, you know, just just being being in that that arena, your name is is etched in that stone that that you can't you know you can't remove that um from you know from anywhere. Now, in, in terms of in terms of everything that you've you've uh, you know your basketball career as a whole, um, what message can you can you give? You know, to to that that to that kid that's out there, man. Um, you know, whether he, whether he be from Brooklyn or not, man. Um, what message can you give to that kid that's out there that's just playing ball with the hopes and dreams that um, you know, one day his number's gonna be called, man. And um, you know, in, in terms of the you know putting in the work, and um, you know, can you speak to that a little bit uh, in terms of um, you know, what you have to do in order to get to this level? Well, I mean, like. It's, it's it's so fun. I feel like the NBA definitely is is achievable for anybody. I mean, there's so much noise out there. It is obviously now with social media and people want to feel like up to it. Uh, you know, up level. Like you know, I can't. You know, I'm not this guy or I'm not this guy. But I feel like if you put in that ten thousand hours, man. You know, I don't know if guys are able to put in that ten thousand hours because you know everything's on social media now and stuff. But you know, if you're Hey, with that 2,000 hours, and you know you don't have any doubt, you know, any fear about it. I, I feel like it's achievable. I mean, guys like you know Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, um, even going back to like guys like Devin George. You know, he was a D3 player, you know, who made it. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely doable. You know, it's it's tough. It's definitely tough. But you know, those things in life that that are worth anything, it's you know, it's going to be tough. Like if you really want it, you know. I feel like the universe is going to put tests, uh, you know, in your way to, you know, to see. Because sometimes if you, you know, I feel like, you know, if you don't really work for something, you know, it's, it doesn't have that same, you know, that same, like, feel to it. Right. When you're, you know, when you grind and you finally, finally get there and, you know, you kind of look back, you know, it's like, wow, like, I, you know, went through all these, you know, different challenges and phases and things like that. And you know you build character like that, and it's like I feel like you you appreciate it more. You know, last year I was you know after you know playing in Vietnam, you know right before the pandemic, obviously I retired. Um, 
and I was like, me and my boys kind of like look back and you know, to come from where I come from, you know, to make it from Cologne, Panama, to go to Brooklyn, New York, the mecca of, of basketball, you know, to play against the guys that I played against, to play, it against, play in the era that I played against, and, you know, to make it through with diabetes and, and all these things, man, it's like, it's like, wow, like, that was, that was, that was a good ride. Uh, that was a good ride. That was an excellent yeah. ride. No, definitely, man. Um, you know, and 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 that ride and all of everything that you've been able to accomplish and, and achieve, that you know, that served that served a purpose for me. Um, because, you know, with me with this platform, um, you know, I'm obviously trying to get um the best basketball players um, you know, on this platform that I can. But um, but it's not about it's not about that. Um, you know, getting just the NBA guys or or what have you. It's it's the guys who have that story of, you know, putting in the the, the work, um, letting that work speak speak for itself, you know, going through those challenges, through going through the turmoil and coming out on top. You know what I'm saying? So uh, definitely salute to you, everything that you've been able to do, man. Um, I have one one last question, man, because um now, in, in terms of the the rankings, right? Like coming, going, going all the way back to uh, your high school rankings and stuff like that. Now, do you agree with the, you know, with the rankings? You know, ranking players on um, the way that they do. You know, does it? Do you feel like it hurts players to to do that so early? Um, and do you think that um, you know players should be mindful of what? where their ranking is and you know a lot of players especially now with social media they're going it's ridiculous you know what i'm saying they're there but what do you think about that i mean like i've seen stuff like kids getting ranked as early as like sixth grade and stuff like that best best third grader in the country in the country which is i mean which is mind-blowing to me but i mean the the era of, the, of that ranking obviously has changed um I mean, when I came out, you know, LeBron was number one. I don't think that was that was wrong at all. But <laughs> right, right, right. Um, it does. It. I don't think it, it matters. Um, obviously, I proved that that it didn't matter. I, I mean, I worked myself to get, you know, to that level of, of being ranked, you know, number four, you know, in the country as as a shooting guard, number twenty overall. But you know, I I don't think it really matters, man. There's so there's players that's overseas that are NBA talent. You know, I, I don't. I just think you know sometimes you know different decisions. You know, you're not able to get you know to that level, and that's their that's just their journey. But you know, the the rankings you know really don't matter. I'm sure that you know guys like C.J. McCollum and and Damian Lillard, who are probably going you know Damian Lillard is definitely probably going to go down as a Hall of Famer, you know, one of these days. And I'm sure he wasn't you know highly touted and things like that. And right, right. I, players even even tell that, that their story about that you know that it doesn't really matter um you know i think this what every every year how many kids like maybe 100 kids or whatever get ranked and there's only 450 you know players every single year in the nba and like you know some of those players obviously don't leave or or you know not you know lose their spot there's only 60 or 30 guaranteed spots per year right was, you know, 100 kids that got ranked in high school or whatever, and then they got to go through college and stuff like that. You know, those rankings really don't matter because, you know, you're up against so much that that's not, you know, that's not the end all be all. Right, right. No, definitely, man. I, I hope that um someone someone out there was listening and uh, was able to, you know, to get some gems uh, from this conversation. Um, before before I leave you, man, I just want to get your your uh, your prediction. Uh, who you got? I'm, I'm thinking uh, you're gonna say, don't don't say what I think you're gonna say, man. But uh, <laughs> I think you're gonna say Brooklyn. The, <laughs> the, way, the way it's looking right now, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I I feel on the on the West. I got Utah coming out. I think. Mm, okay. Thank you. I mean, I, I definitely think it's gonna be Utah Phoenix, but I don't know. Uh-huh. I feel like Utah is just. Just playing at such a high level right now. I don't right, want to go against my man CP, but I don't know. I think like just the youth will probably play a play a part in that series. You know, if, if it gets to that. And that's gonna be entertaining. Right, but on the East, <laughs> yeah, I go with. <laughs> I 
gotta go with the home team, man. Hey, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you at all, man. I'm not mad at that 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 choice at all. Um, you know, sorry we interrupted the game for you. You know, you, I, you know, I, I appreciate you definitely. I was it was good, like you know, reliving and talking about that stuff. And um, I, if anybody's out there that's a diabetic or have any illnesses, uh, you know, I'm definitely I'm coming out with a, a children's comic book uh, this. Mm this fall. So stay tuned look at, look out for that. It's going to be, it's going to be huge. I think this is what my purpose is to show, uh, you know, people and even kids with illnesses or not illnesses that, you know, you can do things, you know, despite of. Mm. No, that's solid, man. I, I, I respect that. And, um, everybody make sure when it does drop I, and, and, you know, send me, send me the, um, information when it drops, man, we, we putting that right out. And um, when, you know, people, when when it does drop, man, go, um, show some support and go grab that that book, man, because um, you know it's, it's useful information for for everybody, man. If you're going through something, um, uh, health wise or not, um, it's it's definitely important to um, you know to to know that that uh, that you can achieve things despite the obstacles that are in front of you. So. Um, you know, again, thank you so much, Gary, for, for, you know, sharing a few moments with me and, and kicking it with me real quick. And, uh, we wish you all the best uh, with your, your future endeavors, man. I know it's going to be hard to stay off that court, but, um, you know, we hope to see you at, you know, at least coaching, uh, coaching again, like, like you were in, in Jersey or with, uh, with the Northeast basketball club, man. Shout out to Trev, shout out to Filet, Jesse Jane, uh, Jesse, um, um jones uh james i believe sorry my bad jess but shout out to my guy filet uh shout out to everybody you know what i'm saying that um that's just out there listening to this man and and um shout out to you gary for 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 that for that quick you know for this for this interview i appreciate you having me man i definitely wish you all the best man and like you said man if you want to take this podcast to the uh to the next level man if you think you can you're right if you think you can't you're right now nah, we getting we getting right, man. By any means necessary, legends talk, y'all. All right, peace, bro.